Hello, this is Juan Carlos Brando. Thank you so much for having us one more time at your house, at your phone, at your desk, maybe at your uh, lunch table. Uh, while we are broadcasting this Q&A live show with the attorney Margaret W. Wong, who has been working on this field for over 45 years. And she has been working on this field, uh, helping thousands of people every single year. So thank you so much for uh, letting us uh, join your conversation or join your lunch today. I hope you are enjoying it. And we have the attorney, Margaret Wong, already with us. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for having us today. How are you doing? I'm very good. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And, well, this is a time of changes, but one of the breaking news has been uh, lately about the priority of deportations of the President Joe Biden. Um, how is this going to work? And How is it different from Obama time? Yes, Obama time, Obama actually was deported in chief. He deported more than 3 million people. I always thought he's very pro professorship. So he was a professor. He was also a community leader. So he wanted to negotiate with the Republicans on, you know, on the more people he thought that gets deported, the more the Republicans would think, oh, I lose my homekeeper, I lose my yard person, I lose my lose my golf course uh, grass person. So, but it didn't really help because the Republicans didn't do anything. So now it's the very, very different in a sense that uh, Biden came out with priorities now saying that if you work with uh, older people, if you have been a long time resident of America, if you have no criminal records, if you have children in America and lived in America for a long time, um, unless you have deportation or criminal records, you should not be deported. So lately, I haven't heard because, you know, our office is busy. So I haven't heard too many people getting picked up. We had someone who was picked up yesterday because he was uh, drinking when he was driving. And it turned out he had an old deportation more than 10 years ago. So he was picked up. Um, I'm sure he'll be okay because uh, he has not pled guilty to this one yet. Um, so, but that's a there is a big difference because Biden is really trying to. I could say he's not deporting, but at least for you don't get what Trump get is like someone was driving and without a backlight, and then the police stopped them immediately. Call ICE and before they even get hold of a lawyer, they were deported. So those days are gone. At least now they keep them in jail, give their families time to come say hello, give lawyers time to work the case and see what happened. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And this is interesting because uh, a lot of people are still scared of what's going on. I think it was just one or two weeks without this priority of deportation, and it was uh, similar to the prior government. But now we have the good news that is reinstated is reset the the priority of deportation. So, Ms. Wong, when we talk about times, about the times of the um, deportations, when we talk about processing times of the um, applications that people file in front of immigration, um, is this going to improve anytime soon? What, what do you think is the government doing to help improve the... the the times. Right. Uh, Mr. Mayorkas actually came up with a new plans, a three prong plan, hiring more people uh, to work in the in the office, just like any businesses in America. America is short of workers. And also we have to remember the mail room in immigration, um, the ankle bracelets in the southern border, the telephone reporting, these are all run by private businesses that have a contract with uh, Homeland Security. So right now they're all trying to hire more people in spite of the pandemic. Um, and also they're trying to get, they're thinking about it haven't passed yet on the 180 day extension on a work permit they're giving us 360 days on a receipt notice. So instead of 180 days now, we lose our jobs, we have nothing left, we couldn't extend our driver's license. 
especially the CDL, the trucking license, because people need uh, trucks to deliver goods and stuff like that. So they're thinking about that uh, on, on removal, on marriage cases, on conditional uh, removal, they're already giving 24 months of extension. So within that 24 months, if your green card is not yet approved, you can still travel overseas and stuff like that. So a lot of good things are happening. But so far, it's only talk. We haven't got the real approval yet. They're also talking about paying extra money from 1500 to 2500 to make a work permit faster, but that will not come until end of May. So things, and also there's a new PD memo that the uh, the court system came up with, it's actually not the court, it's more the OCC, the, the OPLA, OPLA came up with, the lawyers that represent the government, the head lawyer came up with this memo, it's about 12 to 13 pages, it came up two weekends ago, it came out on a Friday and I spent Saturday uh, reading it and laughing at it, that was a fun memo, you know they mean it because they're, that memo is a good memo, and you know someone who knows the field wrote that, it's not someone like just in policy, because policy people doesn't know people like us, because we work in the fields, we know how much is processing time, we know how to do a parole, we know the difference between TPS and then, you know, a humanitarian parole versus TPS parole versus, for, so um, it was a good memo. So these things are happening, but it just takes time because the PD memo won't come into effect until April 25th or 28th. So things are happening, but we just have to wait. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. Yes, we need to be patient right now. And is there any action uh, that people could take, for example, if I have been waiting for the approval of a 601A for over one or two years, uh, can I ask the uh, USCIS or the NVC to do something in order to help my case? You could ask, but they're not responding. That's another thing that Biden, I'm sorry about that. Biden is trying to help more because you notice whenever you call immigration, they're always a very nice man and woman on the phone, talk to you. Those are very much another contracting company. They just have a script. It's like calling the tax people. You know, they have a script. Oh, uh, you, you don't need a parole, but you do. But those are they're not legal advice, uh, but they are talking about hiring more people there. So the phones get answered faster. The receipts, instead of waiting for sometimes nine weeks to get a receipt notice, you need only wait for three weeks, stuff like that. But certainly you can ask, you can go on the internet and ask them questions. You can call them and then they have level one, level two help. Or you can also go to a con congressman's office, senator's office and ask the aides to help. Or you can call the ombudsman's office to have a big form you want to fill out you can do that too they are opening up ways but what the, the the bosses don't know is people are not answering people are not doing it they're very nice on the phone but that's about it yeah that's right thank you so much miss Wong, for this clarity in your answer and if you need more information please don't forget to call the office the phone number is 216-279-3984 216-279-3984 the attorney margaret w wong she has offices in nine cities of the united states in atlanta cleveland chicago columbus memphis minneapolis nashville new york and raleigh north carolina and the phone number is just one 216-279-3984 216-279-3984. Let's start reading the questions that are coming in today, Ms. Wong. And this first question is, Hi, I am traveling to Colombia for my visa interview after my husband petitioned me. Uh, do I need to get the I-864 tax returns and medical? Yes, uh, you don't need a medical. You, uh, If I were you, I would stop even smelling marijuana for the past six months. Um but uh, you do the medical on the instruction sheet on your visa call letter. They should have a place that you can call to schedule a medical. You need to see the doctor in a uh, certified uh, U.S. Department of State clinic in Columbia. Congratulations. Absolutely bring an old copy of the 864 uh, and a joint sponsor if your husband don't make enough money. Uh, if there's a new tax return, bring that and bring two copies. It's all the instructions is on the visa call letter. 
make sure you bring it and make sure you bring and read your copy of a 601A approval uh, because I presume you have a 601A approval in one, one and a half years. But Colombia is not that difficult. Mexico is the one that's really having some problems now. They're talking about um, illegal transport. They're talking about, uh, you know, they want to do DNA testing. Something changed in Mexico, but Colombia is okay. Yeah. yeah, I want she, to make sure I won't get uh, stuck. I hope you're not stuck. But even if you're stuck, just do exactly what they say. On the 221G letter, they will say you need a waiver. Uh, but Colombia is not big on illegal transport. That's a problem. Because, for example, I came with my daughter across the border to America, and I surrendered in the line. They, uh, Mexico American Embassy, they may say it's a legal transport case. But since it's your own blood, after 97, there's still a waiver, but if it's only a nephew and niece, there's no waiver. That's another issue. You're right. Uh, I hope you don't get stuck too, but good luck. Keep praying. You'll be fine. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And yeah, if you need more advice, maybe you need to call the office. The phone number is 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984. Um, this next question is, hi, my wife is waiting for asylum. She beat me up and she called the police. They got me arrested and she wants me to get deported. How can I demonstrate that she is mean and tries everything to harm me? I have been deported several times, but I come back. Uh, there are two issues on this case. What's the definition of harm? I think it's a relationship went bad. Um, you can always uh, report her to police, and then it's up to the police to see what you can do. On the other hand, though, she is probably your children's mother, and you have been deported a few times. So I would do a FOIA for yourself, and you cannot mingle love and hate on your immigration case, or on her immigration case. We all suffer in America. Um, it may be a divorce issue, a separation issue, a social worker issue, go see a psychiatrist. But when it comes to immigration, please don't hurt each other. Because I have cases where the report, the man will report against the woman, the report, the woman will prison, and then they regret. And then, you know, we have to explain to the police, oh my gosh, please don't do anything. Because once you report abuse, even though later on you recant, the prosecutor and the judge may think is a victim of domestic violence and we only recant because we are scared of our spouses. So once you report, you can go back. It's like a river of no return. So I always tell people love and hate, you do that's a relationship problem, but don't hurt each other on the immigration case because that's why we come to America is not to beat each other up and you know just just she's a woman, just say okay, whatever, you know? Um, that's me. I mean I don't, what do I know about relationships? Yeah, some people just can can't hold it. They cannot stop arguing. And I I've learned at some point that when you are married, at some point one of you have to stop. Either her or you, one of the 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 person in the discussion has to stop because if we don't stop, we're gonna go somewhere else and it's gonna be harder to stop. And uh, I've been married for five months, Miss Wong. And I <laughs> That's what know I was this. thinking. Who is he to give advice? He's only married for five months. <laughs> that is really uh, I have learned to stop. Yeah. I have learned to stop. Thank you so much, Miss Wong, for, <laughs> for uh, your answer. And this next question, but don't forget uh, that this uh, that you can make a an appointment with the attorney Margaret W. Wong, who has over 45 years of experience. And you can just call the phone number 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. Um, so attorney Margaret, this next question says, um, hi, I was victim of a violent crime in 2003. I never did nothing, but I still have the report. Could I do something yet to get legal documents? I think you're talking about U visa. U visa it depends on the uh, law enforcement. You can talk to the district attorney, talk to the judges, or talk to victim services because you are a victim. Normally, it's so old they don't sign it, but sometimes they may. New York, when uh, Bloomberg was there, he ran a 
really nice department on first offense. Um, they could give you some sort of pardon just to help you on the immigration. So it was a very nice operation, but now he's no longer the, 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 the mayor of New York. So it depends on the state, but absolutely go talk to victim of crime. You have a copy of that report, talk to victim of crime and see if they're willing to help you get the 918B signed. But if not, at least whatever you're doing now, tell the adjudicator that you were a victim of crime. Under President Biden's new PD memo, uh, all these new stuff, a victim of crime could stay in America and not get deported. But it could be just for U visa application, but you never file for you. But I would go see victim services and check out. They will tell you what happened to the to the perpetrator and did you cooperate because we have a lot of clients the same thing they're scared you know they first came to america something bad happened to them actually we have a client who was raped in the back alley it happened to her twice by the same man i mean she just didn't report she was so scared you know um and then uh, it was just really uh, tragic so same with you i will talk go if i were you i would talk to a victim of crime and, and talk about it there's they all know about i mean talk to the victim services they all know about u visas nowadays thank you so much Ms. Wong. and now that you mentioned the u visa um what are do you remember right now the the requirements to get yes. a work permit for u visa yes uh there's three things number one uh there has to be a crime it cannot so for example you and your husband are yelling at each other fighting each other you got a, a, a temporary restraining order and tro from the civil court divorce court civil divorce court is not a criminal court or a prosecutor's office so probably it's not a victim of crime unless they're willing to sign off but then it became a weaker case so number one there has to be a crime committed number two you have suffered injury like you had uh, a lot of uh, mental issues uh, you were cut on your face on your arm you went to an emergency um, Number three is the most important thing is you corroborated with police. You reported the crime. You corroborated with them uh, to help pick up the bad guy. You identified the bad guy in, in court and you came to testify in spite of the threats you have been given. So the third point is very important. We have a lot of clients who they were so scared. Not only didn't they report it or after they reported, a neighbor reported it, they, they just was too scared to, to go talk to the police or too scared to identify the bad guy. Uh, so that sometimes the police won't sign it, uh, but maybe you can talk to them. Yes, your daughter was a victim of abuse at that time. That's very good. If your daughter is foreign born and if she's still under 21, she can protect the parents or if the parents are overseas, she can also file the U visa when it's approved the parents could come from overseas and any siblings under 18. That's why it's good. But if the daughter is an American citizen, then you need somehow the police to sign you off as a victim because if the daughter is a victim we just had the t visa denied because the police actually t visa you don't even need a law enforcement signature but the immigration thinks the abuse the victim is the american citizen so why do you need a t visa so now we have to change the narrative into the parents or at least the mother or the father is the victim so this is a good case depends on if she's the citizen or she's an alien Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for your answer. And don't forget that you call attorney Mark W. Wong uh, to the phone number 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. Nine office in the United States and over 45 years of experience. That talks very good about Ms. Wong and multiple awards uh, over the years, not only for her, but also for the attorneys that are working in the law firm. So thank you so much, Ms. Wong for all you do for the community. Um, we have a next question. Hello, my name is Ayman. I am from uh, Tunisia and I have 40 years old. I came to the United States, it's more than three years by, uh, by a tourist visa, B1, B2. I want to know is that there is possibility to make work permit or social security and green card? Thank you. A tourist visa is only good for six months. If you have not did a change of status or extension, I presume you're overstayed. Uh, you're also 40 years old. Uh, if you are gay, Tunisian, you have a good case. I presume you're not gay because you didn't say it here. Um, but 
we are stuck because that's what I mean. Whenever you are on a tourist visa, if I were you, I would do uh, an extension, ex especially during the virus. It's not that hard to get tourist visa extension or uh, do a change to a student visa because it takes about nine or 10 months to approve a student. That's another great thing that Biden is doing. Under Trump and under Obama, you have to have a parallel track. So if you came in a tourist visa, every five and a half months, you have to extend, extend the uh, tourist visa, waiting for the F1, the student visa to be approved. That takes about nine to 11 months. So in the meantime, you have to balance each other out. Under uh, Obama, the earlier part, you don't need it. But now Biden brought the old law back, saying that as long as you have a change of status to a student visa, you don't need to keep extending your tourist visa, waiting for the approval, because it's just a waste of money. Because every 500 miles, you have to pay like more than four or $500 just for the filing fee. Now, in your case, if you have a good narrative, because I don't know if it's the first time you came or the second or third time you come. So the second or third time you come, if you have a good asylum narrative, like what happened to you, what happened to your parents, what happened to your family, if you have one, if you don't have one, normally uh, people from from Tunisia, marry younger. So why didn't you marry? If you have children, but your wife divorced you, that's unheard of. So why? So if there's a good narrative on fear of going back because of past fear relating to future fear or humanitarian fear, then you can also do an asylum case. But you miss it one year because you came more than three years ago because asylum has to be filed within one year. So the reason, it, why did you miss one year? Because Rojas' deadline is this week. Uh, Rojas' case uh, specifically said that if you were detained in jail and the jail people did not inform you that you have only one year to file, you can still file it outside of one year, but deadline is this week. But you can still put on a form that I was not informed. But being you were not detained because you came under a tourist visa, Rojas doesn't apply to you. So we have also have to explain why it took you three years to apply for asylum. What's the trauma? What's the hurt? What's the drama? Um, you need that narrative. The whole thing about America is you need that. I hate to use a story because what makes a movie beautiful versus a music that's really, you look at it and say, oh my gosh, I'm too tired to listen to the story. You know, why is Adele beautiful? I mean, her music. So um, it has to catch you. It has to catch the officer and the judge and say, oh my gosh, you know, this, not only is it a sad story, it has to have fear because of nationality, race, religion, political opinion, member of a special group. It's a very, very narrowly defined ground. But personally, I do believe and I don't think uh, a lot of lawyers are saying asylum is not good. I don't think it's not good. I really think there's an open litigation. Uh, there's a lot of things that need to be changed on asylum because American laws have not changed in the past. Like aside from 245I, that started in December 2000, uh, there's no change. I mean, you can't do that. I mean, even business cycle now is changing every six months, every year. Uh, even Netflix now are saying that, oh, uh, family members can no longer share. Um, so stock just went down 35% overnight. I mean, you know, Netflix, oh my gosh, we all have Netflix, you know, but I use my son's, I'm sorry. I should pay for my own, but I'm just too cheap. So, um, so why doesn't American immigration law change in the past 20, 22 years? It's just so silly, right? So, so I would not be afraid of asylum, but don't just do it because you need that work permit or something. Then it really is a disgrace for the whole community, for the whole system. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for this answer. And we're receiving a bunch of questions right now. So um, let's see if we can answer some of them. The phone number, don't forget, is 216-279-3984. Uh, Francis is asking, my affirmative asylum got approved after pending for over two years. Hey. While it was pending, I fell in love with my girlfriend who is a U.S. citizen and got mm -hmm. married, and she filed for a green card for me, and that green card application is still pending. I'm wondering what happens in such situation. So I presume you came legally, your asylum is granted, and then now instead of getting the asylum green card, which means that you cannot go home until you become a citizen, you're getting a green card based on your spouse, you, you have two choices. You either wait for the approval of the green card based on your girlfriend, uh, 
based on your USC wife. If it uh, if the green card was approved less than two years, you'll only get a two year green card. If it approved more than two years after marriage, you get a ten year green card. Personally, I would not withdraw my asylum grant until I got my uh, citizen. I mean, my uh, green card grant. On the other hand, if you uh, even if you got the approval on the grant on the uh, green card based on asylum, you could still get citizenship within three years because you already married your spouse, so you don't need to wait for five years. So use your own judgment. Because on the marriage case, they have to look at you know the tax return. But on the on the tax return, bona fides of relationship depends on what country you're from. Sometimes American is sort of racist. Um, they sometimes they look at more. But you have an asylum grant. There's no motivation for you to go on a fraud marriage. But on the other hand, if you already got an asylum grant, uh, I I presume you never went home. You don't need a six uh, six. Um, there's a two waiver, 601, a 602 waiver. That's an asylum grant waiver. Um, maybe stick with that asylum because it's a marriage case could be a pain because they look at bona fides, they look at prior divorces, they look at how she got the green card. If she sponsors someone else within five years, then they don't like the way. And she got the, a lot of cases where uh, the USC was naturalized by marrying someone and now divorced that person less than five years, married someone else, and become a citizen. And it's just messy. But it's up to you. But I don't necessarily think asylum green card is bad because you could still get a citizenship within three years. You don't have to wait for the four or five years after asylum green card to get citizenship. As long as a marriage was more than three years, it depends on if your green card and the marriage is, I think it's already, I would go maybe on an asylum grant, but that's okay. It depends on where you live because Ohio, you get a green card in less than sometimes nine months, eight months. In New York, sometimes one and a half years. Uh, I don't think you want to give up the asylum. It's so hard to get an asylum grant, an affirmative one too. I presume you got the grant with USCIS. And I hope your lawyer is not under investigation because there's some notaries or people under investigation. So in the olden days, when the, when the lawyer was under investigation, they only look at cases that uh, you know have similar wording, the notarios and stuff. But nowadays, they take away your whole computer, and it hurts. Like if you represented like a thousand people in your whole life, it really hurt them also because they look away your whole computer. So use your judgment. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. <clears throat> the good thing is that he has two options, and the two options are good, are positive. So uh, just uh, use your judgment, and if you don't know what to do, just call Ms. Wong, and she will know uh, Another thing what is, to do. I'm sort of proud. If I have two choices to get a green card, I would probably want to get my green card through asylum. I don't need a spouse who next to me whenever we fight. Oh, I got you the green card. Oh, oh you yeah. nothing wrong. You know, that's... You're another right. Thing. You're yeah, right. Yeah, that's well. another thing. I don't, yeah. Personally, yeah, that's, yeah. that's very, very, very true. Yeah. It is, uh, some people just think that maybe we get married mm -hmm. Uh, to them because we want documents and no matter how much time how long it goes they will maybe keep that little seed of doubt in their mind that maybe if I want to do something oh you use me for the green card so you don't need that in your life right now thank you so much Ms. Wong and this uh, we have a couple more questions but uh, I'll go over this one uh, when filed for siblings visa in 2016, sister of U.S. citizen was citizen of Nepal, but now has a strong Australian passport. So when it's approved later, how it works uh, and can she apply for a tourist visa with her Australian passport? Is it possible to get tourist, uh, to get tourist visa from her Australian yes. passport? Thank yes, you. on all forms you do. It doesn't matter what passport you carry. If you apply for a tourist visa, that's called the DS-160. On the form, they ask you where you're born. You always say wherever you're born, you're born in Nepal. What nationality are you? Australian. So uh, I don't know if Australia have ESTA, the 90-day visa. But anywhere you say, you want to, on, the form, on all these forms, they ask, did you ever apply for a green card? No. Uh, was there a visa petition that was applied for you? Yes. My sister uh, filed in 2016. 
under normal circumstances, doesn't matter the call or strain, they should still approve it because a sister case is family four is only uh, open from 08 or even 07. It's coming between 08 and 07, it's another 10 years. So especially if you're applying for tourist visa from Australia, answer yes, they should give you that tourist visa. This is just too long for sisters. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And uh, well, uh, do we have time for one more question, Ms. Wong? Yes, I do. Okay, so, uh, sorry about this. Hi, my name is Haider Saman. I am from Pakistan. I entered the United States from border, and now I live in Ohio, Cleveland. I want to file a case for asylum. I, re I was released from ICE last month. Can you, well, he's asking for the fee, but let's maybe focus just in, right. I uh, don't... can he file asylum? I would be very, very rich if all my clients and I tell them how much because we have a lot of clients. So um, I think for now, instead of worrying about money, and that's why we come to America, we always will make money. Now, you are Mr. Salmon, you're from Pakistan, so you need to know where your parents are from because Pakistan only became Pakistan after 1948. So you need to talk about your story because not all people from Pakistan can be granted asylum, but you came, I figure you can came from the border, you were, you volunteered in the line, you were detained. I don't know if you pay a bond or you came with a child, which means that you only were detained for two or three days, but you need to remember that story or the narrative you gave to the border. You may be paroled in if they believe your story or if they, you pay the bond or no bond. I would look at all that. As long as you file asylum within a year, um, it's easier to, to win. But it's the whole narrative. Don't just file asylum because that's your only hope, you know, because it really is not nice. So, uh, and once you file asylum, Biden came back with getting a work permit 151 days versus uh, Trump's 360 days. So first you file, then you get a uh, uh, receipt notice, then you get a fingerprint notice because you're young, you probably only get one. Then you file a work permit, then you get the work permit, then you go to interview. Now, if you pass like the other gentleman, the earlier question, he probably passed in USCIS and he was lucky because sometimes it takes another three years or two years or one year to get the final fingerprint cleared. In your case, Pakistan fingerprints, sometimes it takes, I mean, it's embarrassing, years to clear because they're just worried about uh, terrorism. This is homeland security. So these are all issues that you really need to think about it, go on the internet. That's a lot of a lot of information on asylum. Uh, re review the situation. Look at your own past. See how old you are. Uh, did you ever apply for tourist visa? And if there was denied, what did you put on the forms? Because I can bet you, uh, whenever you file for asylum, immigration will look go as Pakistan, uh, wherever you were living, did you ever apply for tourist visa? They will check those forms out. So if you said at that time you're married, most people say they're married to get an easier visa. So now you need to explain if you're still single, why did you say you're married? So there's a lot of issues. Um, and congratulations, though, at least you're in, you know? And nowadays it's nice because they didn't put ankle bracelet on you because years ago, Geo is the company, like ESAP and Geo, they are companies that do ankle bracelets and they make a lot of money. But because of the new Biden, uh, they don't, uh, they give you only a phone now, a computer thing to report, report, report. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for this clarification and to, uh, for this answer. And if you need more advice, please, you are in Cleveland. You can just walk to the office. It's uh, located in uh, 3150 Chester Avenue in Cleveland, Ohio. 44114 uh, is the address that you can go and visit Ms. Wong in her office and she will take care of your immigration issues so or concerns. So please just give us a call, 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. Ms. Wan, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate uh, that you are working all the time. Nothing can stop you. <laughs> and thank you so much for your heart into this uh, helping a, a lot of people from all over the world. Thank you so much. And you don't forget to call the, the office. The phone is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984.
216-279-3984. Attorney Margaret Wong with over 45 years of experience and nine offices in the United States, Atlanta, Cleveland, Chicago, Columbus, Memphis, Minneapolis, Nashville, New York, and Raleigh, North Carolina. And the phone number is just 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. See you next time and take care.